14.1 Simplifying Rational Expressions Let's define a rational expression. A rational expression is the technical name for a fraction in which the numerator and or the denominator are polynomials. All rational expressions must be written in lowest terms, or they need to be reduced, and you know that about fractions. But in order to perform division whenever we have fractions, they must be connected by multiplication. As long as you divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same value, then you're really dividing by one, which means the fractions have an equivalent value. So for example, if we do this with just numbers, we could break these numbers down into their factors. 10 is the same as five times two, 15 is the same as five times three, and we could separate those factors by multiplication well now, 5 divided by 5 would just reduce to 1, and then 1 times 2 thirds would just be 2 thirds. So that's basically the idea of what we're going to be doing, only we're doing it with polynomials. Now reducing monomials we've done before, but let's just um, refresh our memory and reduce these monomials. Here we have 5 xy over 9xy. So remember we look at the things that have the same bases and these y's would cancel and so would the x's and if we could reduce the number part we would but we can't so it would just be 5 over 9. Now remember if our variables have exponents then when we have the same base and we're dividing the same base we would subtract the exponents and put our answer where the biggest um, exponent is. But first let's reduce the number part. 5 over 25 would reduce to 1 fifth. And then for our x's, when we subtract 2 from 4 we get 2, but the biggest one's on the bottom so we're going to put the x squared on the bottom. In example number 3, 12 over 8 would reduce to 3 over 2 and it's still negative, so negative 3 over 2. For the a's, we have an a squared on top and an a on the bottom. When I subtract, I just have 1a on top. For our b's, they would just cancel. And then for the c's, remember there's an understood 1 here, so 5 minus 1 is 4. The biggest one's on the bottom, so c to the fourth would go on the bottom. And then 6x divided by 6x, a lot of times we use the term cancel out, but remember, anything divided by itself is 1, not 0. Now we can reduce fractions that are binomials. Binomials, remember, are two terms that are connected by a plus or a minus sign. Um, we can't separate those terms and we can't divide between the terms because they're connected. So a lot of times, anytime I see a binomial, I put it in parentheses just to remind myself that it's connected. Now, if the entire binomial is the same on the top and the bottom, then they would divide out and we would just get one. As long as they're connected by addition, we can change the order and this would be x plus six and six plus x is the same as x plus six. So just like in number five, these would cancel and we get a one. We have to be careful whenever we're dealing with subtraction because even if I were to rearrange the denominator, this is a negative x plus six. That's not the same as x minus six. So this can't be reduced. That is the reduced term. All right, so for number eight, x minus, I mean, x plus six divided by x minus six, it doesn't matter how I rearrange this, this is gonna be the same, so this is also reduced. Now, the only, one, the only thing that I could do in any of these to go a little bit farther is even though these don't look the same, I can make them look the same by factoring out a negative one. Because of the fact that these are additive inverses of each other, 
Remember, additive inverses mean that all of the signs um, are different. So positive x, this is negative x. Negative 6, positive 6. If in either one of these terms, either the top or the bottom, let's go with the numerator. If I were to factor out a negative 1, that would change every sign. So that would give me a negative x plus 6. And now it's the same as what's on the bottom. So now these would cancel and my answer would be negative 1. But in this, if I were to factor out a negative 1, let's just do the same thing and factor out a negative 1 on top, that would give me the additive inverse of the numerator, which would be negative x minus 6. Does that look the same as the denominator? Almost, but this x is negative and this x is positive. So even taking the additive inverse or factoring out a negative 1 doesn't allow me to reduce this rational expression any farther. So that's as far as I can go. Now, we cannot do this. We cannot say, oh, well, these x's are the same. They cancel out. Remember that our binomials are connected by that plus sign. So we cannot cancel out terms that are connected to other terms with pluses or minuses. If we do so, then we kill a kitten. And if you were in my classroom and I saw you do this, I have a stamp with a dead kitten on it and I would stamp your problem with a dead kitten. So please don't kill any kittens. Even if you don't like kittens, I do. And if you cancel out things that are connected to other terms with pluses or minuses, then you kill a kitten. All right, reducing fractions means that you first have to factor and then divide. Once we factor, the numerators and the denominators will be connected by multiplication, which will allow us to divide. So let's look, always simplify or always factor when you can, and then try to simplify. So if I look at this numerator, do you see a greatest common factor? I see 12 as a common factor. So if I factor out a 12, I'm left with a plus b. In the denominator, is there a greatest common factor? Yes, 3. And if I factor out a 3, I'm left with a plus b. Now, the a plus b's can cancel because they're together, but they're, this is only connected to the 12 with multiplication it's only connected to the 3 by multiplication, so those can cancel out, and the 12 over 3 would reduce to 4. Excuse the thunder that you hear in the background. All right, number 10. In the numerator, we can factor out a 3, and we would be left with y minus 1. Remember, where when we factor things out, it's like we're dividing those terms by whatever we factored out, and 3y divided by 3 is y, Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. In the denominator, there's no greatest common factor, but this is a trinomial. So let's see if we can factor it like we factor trinomials. All right, remember it's backwards of foiling. So what would we put in these two spots that would give us y squared, y times y? What can we put in these two spots that would multiply to give us 1? 1 and 1. All right, remember this sign tells me if my signs are the same or different. Plus means they're the same, and this tells me what they are. All right, so now I can cancel out or divide out one of these y minus 1s. So my answer would be 3 over y minus 1. All right, in number 11, we're going to... Um, Factor the numerator just like we did in the denominator of number 10. It's a trinomial. In my first two spots, I'm going to have a and a. All right, then I need the factors of 6 that would subtract to give me 1. The factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Well, 2 and 3 would be the factors that would give me 1. And then this tells me the sign of the bigger number. So that's negative and that's positive. In the denominator, how would we factor that? That's a difference of perfect squares. So remember to do a difference of perfect squares, we take the square root of the first term. 
the square root of the last term and plus and minus. All right, so now these would cancel and my answer is a plus two over a plus three. All right, we have a couple more. Here in this numerator, we see that this is a trinomial, but before we factor as a trinomial, if, it's, if there's a greatest common factor in all the terms, we wanna factor that out first. And all of these terms are divisible by three, so let me factor out a three. All right, now I can factor both of these trinomials. Okay, so that three has to stay with my answer. Okay, and this would be A and A. The factors of six that would add to give me five would not be one and six. Two and three is what would add to give me five. Okay, so two and three. This tells me my signs are the same. They're both negative. All right, A and A. I need the factors of six that would subtract to give me one. Again, it's two and three. But this time my signs are different and the biggest one is negative. All right, so those would cancel and my answer is three times A minus two over A plus two. And in number 13, this would be a difference of perfect squares. And remember, we need to be careful about the order. It's the A's that are negative, the fours are gonna be, or the A's that have different signs, and the um, fours for the 16 would have, would be positive. So this would be four, four, A, A, and plus and minus over, if I factor out a two, because that's the greatest common factor, I would be left with a minus four. Now, that's very similar to this, but this is a positive a, this is a negative a, positive four, negative four. So I need this to be the additive inverse of this, which means I need to factor out a negative or a negative one. Well, I factored out a two, so let me just change that two to a negative two. Then that would make this a negative and this four positive. So even though they're in a different order, these two are the same and they would cancel out. So now my answer is four plus a over negative two, or if we wanted to bring that negative up, it could be negative four minus a over positive two.